How does the law of attraction work? The universe should respond your way. You can determine your destiny, that's what being human means. If you transcend the limitations of your own logical mind, what is there is here, what is here is there. So my question is, um, if someone is sending out Okay, you want your life to be a certain way, you, you send out positive signals, which is great, but… To whom? To the universe, to the universe. Which See? direction? Up or down? <laughs> That's what I'm asking, how does the law of attraction work? Does it really work? Law you know, of attraction is something that happens between opposites <laughs> Yes? <laughs> Whether two magnets or two, you know, male. two opposites, male and female or whichever way, Law of attraction is always between opposites, isn't it? From North Pole to South Pole to this and that, it is working like that. Right. Now you're talking about the universe, so that means you are an alien to this universe? Part of the universe. If it's part of the universe, what is there to be attracted about? Well, how… why do they say then you can design your own destiny? You can. You can determine your destiny, you should, that's what being human means. Right. See, if you had come here like any other creature on this planet, they have compulsive cycles. They live by that, it's okay for them because that's all they're capable of. Actually, if you look at your life, you're not doing anything very greatly different from what the other creatures are doing. They are born, you are born, you grow up, they grow up, they, re they reproduce, you reproduce, they die, you die. Nothing very different, but these same simple things, we can conduct them consciously. That is the significant thing about being human. The moment you conduct it, let's say you conduct your hand consciously, now this hand will do what you want, isn't it? You won't simply sit here and do like this. Now this will hand will do what you want. Suppose you conduct your thought consciously, now your thought will do what you want. If your thought was doing what you want, how would you keep yourself blissful or miserable? Blissful. Blissful. Yeah. If you are blissful, would you go in search of happiness? So these things that people think are the greatest things in their life to be peaceful, joyful, nonsense wouldn't mean a thing to you because you're blissful. But you can't say that to them, they'll feel insulted. <laughs> you have to… <laughs> but essentially, if your thought and emotion was taking instructions from you, you would keep yourself in the highest level of pleasantness, whatever that is, isn't it? Correct. Yes. If that happened, your entire life process will come to an ease, total ease. Right now this is because you have to… you're a crouching tiger. You have to go get something, always. There is nothing to get, if you sit here, you're… Life is complete. Now it's at ease, total ease. When it's in this kind of ease, it will become perceptive. Now, just pursuing a profession, making money or even being joyful or being loving or falling in love, nothing means anything to you because just sitting here, the highest level of pleasantness is happening to you. So what would you do with that life? Naturally, you would explore something that is not in your perception right now. This is how spiritual process begins. This is how you take charge of your life. Now you wish for something, it happened. I want you to know this, for most people, at least fifty percent of what they wish happens. It is just that they are focusing on a few things that did not happen. If you want to be fair, in a reasonably well-settled society, ninety percent of what they wish happens, it is the ten percent they're complaining about. Yeah. Hello? Isn't it so? Yeah. Ninety percent of your life is happening the way you want it. The ten percent you're cribbing, you're never enjoying the ninety percent because this ten percent did not happen the way you want it. Yeah. <laughs> so already, to a large extent, you're in control of your destiny. A little is going off, but that little can bother you. Let's say you have to drive hundred kilometers. Ninety kilometers you went properly where you want to go, at the ninety-first kilometer you crashed. 
still it's not good, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why they're complaining, I'm not saying they're complaining for nothing. Because at ninety kilometers everything went well, just before reaching something crashed. So they still suffer for that. Now, right now this is because situations are happening around us. Not all situations will ever happen the way we want it. Because situation is not just me. Situation is so many people involved, so many forces involved. All of them need not happen my way. But if I am happening my way, I am blissful, okay? Whether the golf ball flies straight or goes into the mountains, I am still blissful. Right. <laughs> as long as you are playing golf. <laughs> Even if I am not playing. <laughs> right. So, so now coming to this, now as long as things happen your way and you're on your own path and you're blissful and you know… No, 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 no. I'm not saying as long as things happen your way, you will be blissful. If you're blissful, it happen. doesn't matter which way it happens. Right. Whichever way it happens, you're blissful. Right. <laughs> See, this is essentially the world has put cart before the horse. You tell me, it's, it is easier to take charge of yourself or it's easier to take charge of all these people? Of… I mean, it's tougher to take charge of yourself, you know. Oh, you can take charge of these people, try. Probably, I, why I'm saying that is because people don't realize that they need to take charge of themselves and are out there to take charge of societies and communities and people and trying to change others. No, right now, you're sitting here. To myself. Is it easier to take charge of yourself or take charge of all these people? Myself. Yourself. You must first do that, no? What is simple and easy? If you take charge of yourself, let us see how much we can get cooperation from these people. Now, when you say you're in pursuit of happiness, what this means is, you want all of them to function the way you want. No, when we say, if this happens, I will be happy, if that happens, I will be happy, what it means is, the world should function, the universe should respond your way. That's not what I'm saying. No, I… I don't believe in that because that's trying to put conditionality into everything that, you know, this is how it should function according to me. What I… what I was saying was that, say, okay, for example, a very basic example of somebody wants to be an actor or somebody wants to be a cricketer and I'm taking a very basic example of what you want to do in life and you work… Let's say it did not happen. It did not happen means what? People did not like your acting or uh, the selectors did not like your cricket, something happened. Right. So what you want did not happen. Can you still… still sit here blissfully? That's a question. Not a lot of people… That is can. why I'm saying, what you're trying to do is, when you say, everybody should like what I'm doing, in some way you have to take charge of their minds, that's what you're doing. In some way through your cinema or whatever, in some way you're taking charge of the… charge of their mind and doing what appeals to them, and that's why it's working, isn't it? Otherwise it won't be working. Right. So, which is easier, taking charge of this or taking charge of them? This. If you take charge of this, now you are not in pursuit of your happiness, you are not tense about anything, there is no, pr you know, sword hanging on your head, you will do everything to the fullest to the hilt because you don't care what happens. Whatever happens, you'll be still fine, this much you know. Now you will naturally do everything wonderfully well because there's absolutely no concern because you're not a vested interest anymore. You will do what is needed without any effort. So what somebody thinks is a great circus and a feat, you will do it joyfully, playfully. Right. right. So well, you just completely negated the fact that there's no law of attraction, there is nothing no, like there that. there is, I'm sure a lot of people are attracted to you <laughs> <laughs> Not that law of attraction <laughs> of, of, of the universe gives you what you want. But anyways, um… Uh, no. where is the universe, I'm asking? Right, we are a part of the universe. When Adi Yogi was asked by the seven sages who are today known as the Saptarishis, they asked, where does the universe begin, where does it end, how big is it, what is it? So he laughed and said, I can pack your entire cosmos into your mustard seed. That's a very efficient packing, isn't it? Very, very. <laughs> <laughs> so, because what you think is time and space 
is because of the nature of your mind. What is there? If you transcend the limitations of your own logical mind, what is there is here, what is here is there, what is then is now, what is now is then, everything, time and space gets all mixed up in your perception. Right. So, when this happens, now you won't be talking to the universe. Those who are not on talking terms with their neighbors, talk to the universe. <laughs>